philosophy of life, do you feel that religion is necessary to such a philosophy? Yes, <clears throat> I certainly feel so, but everything depends what you mean with the word religion. Uh, my most favorite description of what religion is, is that it's the answer to the question, what is the meaning of my life? For what do I live? Why have I come into this existence? Where do I go? What's my relation to the short time in which I live and perhaps to an eternity which is above past and future? Now all these are questions which every human being has somewhere in a corner of his soul. And nobody can really escape these questions. And what religion does is <coughs> to try to answer these questions, and above all, the main question, what is the meaning of my life and life generally? Do you feel that uh, values, moral values, are intrinsically necessary to such a philosophy of life? Yes, I think that life in a special dimension, I call it the dimension of spirit, which we have only in human beings in the world as far as we know it now. May, may be that there are other beings who also have this uh, character which I call spirit. Now wherever this spirit works and moves, there the basic foundation, the foundation of everything else is morality. Uh, but again, I must say this has only sense if I say what I mean with morality. I mean with it all those activities of man, internal and external acts, in which he actualizes himself as a person, in which he becomes what he by nature is and should be, namely a person. So morality <coughs> is not what many people think, a obedience to tables of laws, to all kinds of prescriptions which God, men, or society may give us. But morality is the realization of oneself as a person. And every act in which we do this is a moral act. Uh, then, Dr. Tillich, uh, when uh, you have spoken about uh, uh, the uh, misunderstanding which is represented in what you have called moralism uh, that uh, many people have about the, the Christian faith, uh, you're not rejecting morality but something else. Uh, yes, now the distinction between moralism and morality is that morality is the right thing and moralism is it's, it's distortion, it's, it's the wrong thing. Moralism is an attitude in which, as I just said, we follow external laws like the laws of the state or the law of uh, the Ten Commandments or even the law of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount simply as laws instead of uh, considering them as expressions of what we human beings essentially are and therefore should be. They are nothing which is strange to us, which is imposed to us from outside. But it's we ourselves put against ourselves. That's what I call a moral law. And now a moralist is a man who doesn't see this, who simply uh, considers the moral laws as something which comes from outside and where he tries to be as correct as possible, following uh, what he considers to be the commandments of God or the commandments of the church or the commandments which is now probably the most important 
uh, way, namely of society, especially of his own suburban society, with all its conventions. Now that's what I would call moralism. And that's just the opposite of morality, because morality is the free realization of a person as a person, and not the subjection to strange laws. <coughs> Could I ask you one more thing about uh, that uh, area of uh, problems or questions? Uh, if we say that uh, we uh, will not follow moralism, uh, then very often we find people reacting. I think some of us find this uh, in our students and classes uh, reacting this way. Uh, we often get the reaction, then what guides have we for making particular decisions uh, in this very complicated kind of world in which we live? If we can't follow the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule and moral principles of this kind, what do we follow when we're making these decisions? No, this demands a long answer. <laughs> And I will, will give you this answer as short as I can. The uh, first principle of all moral action is love, but not love in the sense in which it's often used today, the sentimental form of love, which has nothing to do with morality, which is simply an emotion. But morality, as the, uh, but love as the reunion with, as I call it so, what is separated. Now in this case, what is separated are the other human beings and also nature as a whole. And love is the power which reunites us with other human beings and with nature and even with ourselves and certainly with the ground of our being, the divine ground of our being. So love is the universal reuniting power. And everything is good, is good, which comes out of this reuniting power of love. And nothing is good, even it's the strict, strictest obedience to a moral law, which does not come out of this power of love. Now, love has a character which nothing else has, namely it listens to the concrete situation here and now. I have to make decisions, moral decisions, each time not only according to the principle of love but also to the very concrete situation. When I am here in this moment talking with you, there must be some kind of love between us, but this kind is changed by the concrete situation. And an hour later, when I am, let's say, in my family or in the hospital or somewhere else, then my love principle would be applied in a different way because the situation demands something else. Now, between love and the concrete situation, the movement goes. But now you probably will ask me one more question. What then about the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule and the Sermon on the Mount and all this? They are <coughs> rules of wisdom. They are based on human experience and put together in these short, all-embracing principles. And we must use them, not as commandments, which we have to obey, but as advices born out of the wisdom of mankind. And uh, so we have actually three elements in every moral decision. And if you look at your own moral acts, you will find that this is a quite exact description. Ultimately, the principle of love. Without love, no moral act at all because love also includes justice. Justice is the backbone of love. Uh, without uh, justice, love is sentimental. Then second, the wisdom of the great lawgivers, as Moses, as Jesus, as uh, the golden rule. And then finally, the very special situation here and now, which each time demands a decision. Now, out of these three elements, a moral decision would come. 
Dr. Telecube.